Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. So we're given that x plus 2 over x is equal to 8, and we're supposed to evaluate x squared plus 16 over x. By evaluate, I mean finding a numerical value. Let me make that clear first. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for the first method, I'm going to do the following. First of all, we're given an equation, right? So why not solve it? That's my idea. x plus 2 over x is equal to 8. And this is actually an easy uh, to solve equation because it's going to turn into, you'll see. All right, let's multiply everything by x. We get x squared plus 2 equals 8x. And I'll put 8x on the left by subtracting. You'll get x squared minus 8x plus 2 equals 0. And this turns into a quadratic. Obviously, x equals 0 does not work, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay? But we always have to check. So to solve this equation, there's a couple different ways. Obviously, it's not factorable. You can find two integers whose product is 2 and whose sum is negative 8. But you can find radicals. So we're going to use either the quadratic formula or you can use the completing the square. There's also another method which was kind of made more famous by... Po Shan Lo, a great mathematician, and I made a video about it, and if I can find it, I'll try to share it with you. <laughs> okay, great. So, let's use the quadratic formula for this, and maybe I'll just illustrate that method. How about that? Okay, so, with the Po Shan Lo's method, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we check the sum of the coefficients. Vieta's formulas tell us that uh, in a quadratic equation, x1 plus x2 is negative b over a, and in this case, it is going to be 8. So we're kind of thinking about two numbers whose sum is 8, and with word problems, we always use the strategy. Let's assume that these numbers are of the form 4 plus n and 4 minus n. Because their sum is going to be 8, obvious, right? I mean, needless to say. So that's going to be the sum. So let's go ahead and just multiply these numbers. Because Vieta's formulas also tell us that x1, x2 is c over a, which is 2 in this case. So if you multiply these two numbers, you get, if you multiply them, you get 16 minus n squared from difference of two squares, and that's equal to 2. And then from here, n squared equals 14, and becomes plus minus square root of 14. And then along with the 4, here's what we're going to get for the roots. 4 plus root 14, and 4 minus root 14. Obviously, you could find the same results with the quadratic formula, but, th but this is much more fun. Okay, so these are the roots of our quadratic. So as x, these values satisfy the first equation. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and plug them into the second. But which one are we going to use? Right? That's a good question. That's actually a million dollar question. And the answer is fairly simple. It doesn't matter. Why? You, that's your job to go ahead and find out. But I'm going to use the second one, not the first one, even though I boxed it. I want to use the negative version. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. x plus 2 over x equals 8. One of the solutions is 4 minus root 14. And now I'm going to evaluate this expression by substituting or replacing x with this. Make sense? Okay, let's do it. Obviously, I need to take 4 minus root 14 and I need to square it plus 16 divided by that. Now here we need to rationalize the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate 4 plus root 14 and 4 plus root 14. Great. Now we're going to simplify this expression. Let's go ahead and square this expression. a minus b squared, as you know, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, right? And then plus, now let's see what's going to happen here. When you multiply these two things, you're going to get from difference of two squares, 16 minus 14, which is 2. 2 goes into 16 eight times. So we, now we have one left at the bottom. Make sense? Okay. So that's going to give us the following, plus 8, multiplied by the quantity 4 plus root 14. Let's go ahead and add these up. 16 plus 14 is 30, minus 8 root 14. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute 8 over this. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 8 times root 14 is 8 root 14. So far, so good. Okay, I hope you're with me still. 
8 root 14 cancels out. We end up with 30 plus 32. Wow, that's so hard, isn't it? And the answer is 62. Like I said earlier, we were supposed to get a numerical value, not a variable expression, and we did. So under these conditions, our numerical value is going to be 62. In other words, if this is true, then this is true. Make sense? Now, I only used one of the x values. The other one is left as an exercise for the reason. Don't you hate that when you see it in a textbook, you're looking for the solution of a problem that you are kind of burning for, and then it says it's left as an exercise for the reader. Oh, man, that's crazy. Anyways, now let's go ahead and look at the second method, right? Okay, and obviously second method is much nicer. That's why it's the second method. So let's rewrite the problem. And I'm pretty sure there's a third method, which I couldn't thought of at the moment. But maybe I can give you some ideas and you can take it from there or you already know. Please do share with me and everyone else. So share in the comment section. So we are given this equation for those x values. We are supposed to evaluate x squared plus 16 over x. So without finding the x values, we're going to find the answer. First of all, we're told that we're looking for numerical value because if the goal is not that, like let's say the answer is a variable expression, then there could be infinitely many expressions that satisfy this, right? So that's why we got to be kind of specific and very strict. That's why I told you we are supposed to get a numerical value. Okay, that makes sense? I hope it does. Now, instead of solving for x values, we're going to do something uh, different, um, something close. Anyways, let's just multiply everything by x again. This time, instead of solving for x, we're going to isolate x squared. Why? Because it's the most powerful term. In other words, it has the highest power, right? So x squared can be written as 8x minus. So in other words, we kind of translated that quadratic into a linear expression. So it's kind of nice because we could constantly do this. So if x squared can be written as a linear function, then x cubed can be written as a linear function, and then x to the fourth, so on and so forth. It's kind of like a really nice key that opens the door to the solution. Make sense? So that's the formula we're going to do. Now, there's kind of two ways to go about it. You can either di uh, directly substitute this into the equation, or you can make a common denominator first and then substitute. But that's going to be more work in my opinion. I could be wrong on that. Uh, that's why I'm going to go with the other approach. So I'm going to replace x squared with this. Let's do it. 8x minus 2 plus 16 over x. Obviously, this is not like an equation where this is equal to a numerical value, so I can multiply both sides by something, but more like an expression that I need to work with. So I'll make a common denominator. Multiply 8x minus 2 by x because this is 1, and then you're going to get 8x squared minus 2x plus 16 over x. Where does this come from? Again, from the expression that we're trying to evaluate. Make sense? So far, so good? Okay, now notice that I told you we have a formula that we're going to keep using. x squared can be replaced with 8x minus 2. So we're going to do this one more time. And as much as necessary, we have an x squared. An x squared is equivalent to 8x minus 2. So now we can replace x squared with 8x minus 2, multiply by 8 the whole thing, and then subtract or add the rest. And again, this is my expression that I'm trying to evaluate. Let's go ahead and simplify this now and find the answer. Well, I'm going to distribute 64x minus 16 minus 2x plus 16 divided by x. 16 cancels out. 64x minus 2x is 62x. If you cancel out the x because we know x does not equal 0, we end up with the same answer, 62 as our numerical value. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.